All right, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easier to understand. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you're always up to date with the latest videos and you're always up to date with the knowledge we're trying to get through. Today, we're tackling problem 12.32. It's again a pooling problem. This time we have four blocks instead of three, so we're doing the next level from our previous video. And the problem state statement says the following. The masses of blocks A, B, C, and D are 9, 9, 6, and 7, respectively. Knowing that a downward force of magnitude 120 newtons is applied to block D, determine the acceleration of each block and the tension of the cord ABC. Neglect the weights and the pulleys, oh, sorry, neglect the weight of the pulleys and the effect of friction. Brilliant. So let's have a look here at our problem. So let me zoom out here. I actually have the picture copy there so we can draw uh, multiple times. So the cord A. B, C is this one here. That's what the tension they want on that one there. Since we have two cords, so we have this uh, A, D, B, I guess. Then we're going to have two different tensions, right? So there will be a tension here. We're going to go ahead and call that T, A for this A over here. And that's going to be the same tension A over here, T, A. It's going to be the same tension A over here. It will be the same tension A over here, same tension A over here. But we have another cord, this one over here. And this is going to have a different one, right? And I'm going to call this one tension D because of this D here. Okay, so this would be tension D. Over here, tension D, tension D. So in this problem, we actually have six unknowns, right? So we have tension A and D as two unknowns, plus the acceleration of this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So six unknowns in total. That will require six equations, and that can be quite overwhelming. But you'll see, and if you have a sharp eye for these kind of problems you probably saw already, that we can eliminate some of them and make our problem a bit simpler to solve. Now, what are we going to do? Like always, the way we solve this is we're going to use equations that determine the position of the blocks, and we're going to use the fact that the length of the rope has to be um, always is always going to be a constant, so that we can get more equations for motions, right? So we're going to get equations relating to the acceleration of the blocks. Then what we'll do is we'll relate the free body diagram of each of these blocks to try to come up with additional equations. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me go get rid of all these tension on this, and let's go on to this next drawing here, so I can do the. vectors okay now as per usual what we can do is we can consider this oops, sorry we can consider this uh, ceiling here the reference point and then we can get vectors leaving from that reference point and that'll be just fine no problem whatsoever but we can also consider the middle of the pulley here because it's going to be exactly the same answer the difference is that this extra bit and you notice this is always going to be there it's always a constant just like this extra bit here just like this extra bit we're cutting it off so Either way, we're going to get exactly the same answer. So my YA is a vector that leads from that reference line that I drew before and goes all the way to block A. So that's going to be my YA. My YB, likewise, is going to come from my reference line all the way to B. That's going to be my vector YB. My YC goes all the way to C. YC. And my YD, hopefully I can make this kind of straight. Okay, and then we have YD here. And we can relate these guys here because we know the length, right? The length of this cord here, ABC, will always be maintained. So in other words, if I sum up, right, if I sum up, let me get my blue lines going, there you go. So if I sum up the vector YA, and notice I'm going to have two times the length of this cord here, so two times YA plus two times um, B, because again we have two of YBs there, plus two times YB plus one time YC, which is precisely this part here of the rope, then that always has to be a Constant, oops, constant. Right? And that means that if I derive this in respect to time twice, then I'm going to get a relationship of the acceleration. So two times the acceleration of A plus two times the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of C has to be zero because the derivative of the constant is going to be zero. Likewise, we can derive one relating block D as well. And for block D, we can do the same thing. We're now interested in the length of this rope here and this rope or this cord is always going to be related to this distance, let's do it in green I guess, this distance here and this distance here, right, because this one's always going to be just stay there as it is. And then we have two options. We could do like a, like a root in green, or we can actually consider it also accounting for the thickness, I guess, or the height of block A and B, because that's also a constant, right? So regardless of whether you consider that one or not, it's always going to be a constant. So this distance there, the one that I drew in green, the total one, that's just going to be my vector yd minus ya, right? Likewise, this red part here is just going to be the vector yd minus yb. So we can write another equation for those for those guys. It's going to look like um, yd minus ya plus yd minus yb always has to be a constant, which means that 
two times ed minus acceleration of a minus acceleration of b has to be zero okay so right off the bat at the get-go we have two equations for our problem and these equations relate to the accelerations this is the all right cool so what do we need to do now now we need to look at the blocks individually right so we need to look at each of these blocks and write equations for their free body diagrams so let's start with this fella here so this fella it has its weight right so the weight of block d going downwards but we also have the 120 newtons that the statement said right from the start so we have something falling down on that guy here an extra 120 force downwards and upwards as can be seen quite clearly here we have one tension here remember we call this tension td and one tension here this is also td okay so the free body diagram so let's right here free body diagram under these different blocks so for block d this guy's going to look like uh, we need to determine what's positive and negative right so let's go ahead and do because we have our y vectors going downwards as positive let's do positive and downwards and there's not going to be any force to on the horizontal but let's just for the sake of it just define the um white words being positive as well so if downwards is positive the equation becomes the weight of d plus 120 minus two times the tension d has to be equal to the minimum second law mass of block d times the acceleration of block d <clears throat> right so the sum of forces just did the sum of forces on the y direction <clears throat> okay next one let's go and go ahead and look at block a what's block a going to look like okay so block a we have tension d pulling downwards on it we also have its weight the weight of a and then upwards there's two ways you can do this you can consider the uh, block and the pulley as two different bodies okay or you can consider them as a single body and just be something like this okay regardless of what you do <clears throat> mathematically it's going to be the same thing just the way you think you're going to have to do an extra step if you separate them in two bodies because you're going to have one tension here one tension here and then you're going to notice that this guy here balances out with this one so <clears throat> it it's ends up being just internal forces so bottom line is we have two of the tension a right tension a on the top there so weight of a tension d downwards and two tension a upwards so block a is going to look like weight of a plus tension uh, d sorry minus two times the tension a minimum second law this has to be equal to the mass of a times acceleration of a block b block b is exactly the same deal as block a let's do it in green if you look at the free body diagram of this control unit that i just drew control body i guess we're also going to have two of the tension a again tension a because it's the same quote right remember it's the same quote all um, joining all these guys and then downwards we're going to have tension d opposing this tension d and we also want to have the weight of block b so weight of b plus tension d and please point it upwards are two times tension a and this has to be equal to the mass of b times acceleration of b and last we have a block c so what does that look like so look this is probably the simplest just looking at this isolated block there are only two forces here right we have the weight of c pulling downwards so the positive one and we have tension a pulling upwards so the negative one so this becomes the weight of c minus tension a has to be equal to the mass of c acceleration of c cool and now note that we have an additional four equations so this would be the equation three four five and six and we have six unknowns like we said in the beginning right the unknowns are the accelerations and the two tensions cool so from this point on it will be just algebra but since it's six equations six unknowns that's a lot of math to go around if you do it right if you start solving it you eventually find this out but what you can do by just observing is the following check it out how is this system going to move i guess i'm going to go back to this one here make it simpler let me get rid of these this for now okay how's the system going to move well we have that force pulling downwards on d right so we expect this guy to go down and this guy is hooked up to b and a okay so we expect d to go down and as it goes down we expect it to pull down on b and a and then if that's happening then we expect these guys to go down and because these guys are going down we expect this guy to go up so we expect c to go upwards right that's what we expect just by looking at this drawing and then if you note, know, like it's only one it's the same rope that's tying d a and b right so there's no it's not like two ropes on a and one rope on b so actually 
this whole thing moves like a single block okay so there's two things to observe the first thing is that a and b they have the same mass both nine kilograms okay and then the second thing is to see that if they're all moving as one whole block then the acceleration of them should be all the same right but we don't need to just trust the observation we can actually see that mathematically so let's go down to this equation here and i want you guys to look at these two equations here these two here okay remember the mass of a and b are the same so because mass of a equals mass of b what would happen to this uh, to these two equations well what would happen is the following let me go ahead and sub the mass of a so where we have mass of b with mass of a so we're going to have the weight of a plus td minus 2 ta this would be equal to mass of a times the acceleration of b okay? and if you look at this equation you see that everything that has been highlighted is exactly the same as our equation four okay so by just observing these two you'll notice that the acceleration of a has to be equal to acceleration of b right you can go ahead and sub in if you were to do the algebra of it you'll end up the same at the same conclusion okay so if they are the same then we can go ahead and look at equation number one remember equation number one where is it over here equation number one and this equation number one is relating a b and c okay so if equation if a equals b right, a equals b then this means that let's probably do this in a different color it means this five oh sorry four acceleration a has to be equal to minus acceleration c right or acceleration c equals negative four times acceleration of a okay so that's one of the things we can can get rid of another unknown by solving for ac and then on this one here it becomes even more interesting right because remember that i said the whole thing moves as a block we now we can check this mathematically because what happens here is two times acceleration of d minus two times acceleration of a has to be zero therefore the acceleration of d has to be equal to acceleration of a which we know is equal to acceleration of b okay so just just like that we killed we went from six equations to four oh, sorry six unknowns to four unknowns and we also solve for one of the unknowns so we only have three unknowns left okay so acceleration of a b and d are the same because this whole thing this whole thing that i drew is a green block it moves together all right so now i need to do some algebra okay and i'm going to speed up the video to solve this algebra up and then we can go from there All right, so what have we found? Um, once we broke down those six unknowns into only three, then it became a simple linear system. So I solved using the calculator straight off, and I got these results. So the tension of D, and that will be the tension on the lower end of the problem, so on the rope ADB, it's going to be 90.58. Then the tension on the top rope ABC will be 84.61. The acceleration of A, B, and D, because they're all the same, is 1.073 meters per second squared and we know that's downwards because it's positive right and the acceleration of c is upwards because it's negative and it's 4.29 so it's four times the acceleration of a magnitude okay so answer wise um i guess equals a b equals a d so this is the answer of part a right the accelerations that were asked for and then the accelerate the, the tension on cord a b c will be this guy here this would be part b right Brilliant. So know that the problem is a bit overwhelming because there's too many unknowns, but once you start to see the symmetries and things that can be um, simplified, then the whole thing becomes simpler. And then indeed what's going to happen is uh, these guys are going to move as a whole block downwards because of that 120 newton force going downwards. And this guy's going to go upwards to compensate this movement on this rope here, right? On this top rope there. Because the bottom rope doesn't really care what's happening. It's just going to move, just going to stay as is, probably. Okay? Um, all right what else what else what else well i think that's it for that, this question if you have any um questions you want to ask me just feel free to and i'll leave you guys with some of the previous videos okay if this was too hard for you make sure to check the previous one on the pulleys because we have been going 
upwards in level since the beginning the first very first pulley problem which we define a lot of things that we use on this one and then uh, from two blocks to three blocks and then three blocks with friction different situations and then now four blocks catch you later